I'll defer to Srila Guru Maharaj to understand the principle. So we should always remember the principle, what is the purpose of all of this? Is it to become free from sinful reactions? Like we've done many bad things, we're bad people. <laughs> so we have many impending sinful reactions. So we're going to fast on Akadashi and, you know, <laughs> clap our hands and the birds of sinful activities will fly away if we clap our hands in front of the deities and we'll observe Chatur Masha, be, you know, because we're just a bunch of bad people. And we've done many bad things and we hope if we do this stuff that somehow we'll be saved. Is that the idea? Or is it really all about devotion? Right? So we sing the song every Akadashi, Shuddha Bhagata, Madhavatiti Bhakti Janani, that these different Madhavatitis, any day that has some special significance, or any time that has any special significance related to Krishna. If we honor that, then we're hopeful that bhakti janani, it will give birth to some devotion. That so devotion will always be the goal, the target. That I want to remind you from the beginning. So the observance, whether it's of Chatur Masya, Akadash, Akadashi, any particular day, the, the goal is increased devotion, not any, for any other reason. Right? So, uh, we, we observe those, what's recommended as far as possible, but there are always, um, you say exceptions or exemptions. Like for example, Srila Saraswati Thakur at the Purushottam Gaudiyamat in uh, um, Puri. If certain things were grown in the garden there of the deity, but the time came to fast from them on Chatur Masya, he didn't have the devotees fast from those things because they were grown in the garden of the deity and that, in his opinion, made them exempt. So, to what degree we'll observe those things, that can be considered. But uh, our main interest is increased devotional tendency. That's the idea. So again, yes, there are statements why it shall be done this way, why that way. Uh, I think of Srila Gurudev in St. Petersburg, as I mentioned before in this particular talk. He, we know in India, he always has his calendar, his pandi, panjika, he's checking that and seeing different auspicious times of the day, what time you can give diksha, what time you can travel, what time is not good for traveling, many, many things. But when he would go to Russia, he would not bring his book with him. Well, one thing is we can say, oh, well, because the calculations are not the same. But there's no other book with all these appropriate calculations. And he said, in a light way, in Russia, he said, Vidi Marg is for India. Like now we're in the Western world in Russia. This, this, he's not going to enforce all of those things. So when in Navadweep Dam, Vrindavan, some holy place in India where uh, the leading devotees there are very acquainted with what is allowable, what's not allowable, then automatically we're following those things. But for us to try and give uh, a lot of attention or emphasis to that outside of that sort of context um, may not yield the desired substance. That's their aspiration. It's an aspiration. 
Does it mean I do this and then I get this as a result? Just that someone on a similar question told Srila Guru Maharaj, I've heard that if you, uh, you know, in, in Kartik, the month of Radharani, which is the last month, if you'll observe then, you'll get the benefit of having you know, observed everything. And Guru Maharaj, again, he dismissed this type of thinking as being faulty in its uh, basis. He said, again, what, what we're interested in is increased devotional tendency. So if it has some connection with that, anukulyasya sankalpa pratikulyasya varjanam, then we're, we're accepting that. But if at the basis of some other idea, or if by observance it awakens another tendency within us, then, then we'll, uh, be careful about that. See, what I am saying is, whether it's in relation to this or other things is, we should avoid the tendency to think that, uh, by doing some particular procedure, procedural type activity that we're going to get something spiritual because of that. But if we say, like today is a Kadashi, we're told, oh, you, your devotional activities, they can be some increase on that day. Maybe we'll uh, read a little more, chant a little more, do, uh, volunteer for some particular service, a little extra, but with the hopes that it may awaken devotional tendency, not a, uh, empiric kind of A plus B equals C or cause and effect. I'll do this and I'll get that. It can't be calculated along those lines, calculating reward by observance. But if, if something we're hopeful, it may awaken an increased dedicating tendency in us to give ourselves more, to sacrifice ourselves more, then we embrace that. So outside of India, we're not um, pressing the devotees on the details of particular observance. And Gurudev, uh, like with regard to Akadashi, allowing that within the Mat, he gave three examples of three different levels of, or styles of observance. Himself, Aranya Maharaj, Haricharan Prabhu. They're approaching this in different ways. So I've said the guiding principle is to not engage in any particular type of observance in such a way that it incapacitates one for service. That'll be the guiding principle. You understand that I, my observance will not incapacitate me for service, because that's the ultimate irony with the real goal being to try and achieve increased dedication that we'll observe in such a way as we come incapacitated for service. That can't be right. So, in conclusion, not much stress or emphasis has been given to that. On a daily basis, we we do particular devotional activities, hearing, chanting, etc. That we're doing every day. Then these days come, and we may increase that, if possible. But again, not with the notion of cause and effect that I'll do a, uh, some particular procedure, I'll follow a particular for formula and get a particular result. That's up to Krishna. 
can't force Krishna to respond in some particular way. 